you have roll call, please? Natalie here. Gavin here. That in here. Ben present. Brian present. We have a quorum. Uh, let's stand for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to start with the recognition of visitors and uh, presentation, but before we do that, I have a letter I would like to read. It's addressed to me. The subject is voting safety course. I would like to take this time to thank the leadership of the town of Cape Charles for the opportunity to offer a public voting safety course at the town community center on 9 April 2016. The course was co-sponsored by the Cape Charles Yacht Club and the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary Flotilla 12-2 for the purpose of teaching safe boating practices to those who use the waters in and around the eastern shore. A total of 36 residents of the Eastern Shore, most of whom were from Cape Charles, attended and successfully completed the course of instruction and the State of Virginia approved exam. The State of Virginia currently requires all boaters 50 years of age and younger to have completed an approved boater safety course or its equivalent in order to legally operate a power vessel in Virginia. As of 1 July 2016, all boaters will need to meet this requirement or an accepted, acceptable variance accepted by the state. By allowing us to offer this course, it has provided more boaters to use the waters in Virginia with the knowledge needed to make them safer boaters. If another boating education course is desired to be offered in Cape Charles, please feel free to contact me at the number provided. Sincerely, Ron West, U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary. Thank you very much for that letter. And thanks for that course because it benefits the town and the citizens surrounding it greatly. And now I'd like to read a proclamation uh, on National Safe Boating Week. Recreational boating is fun and enjoyable, and we are fortunate that we have sufficient resources to accommodate the wide variety of pleasure boating demands. However, our waterways can become crowded at times and be a place of chaos and confusion. While being a marvelous source of recreation, Boating to the unprepared can be a risky sport. Not knowing or obeying the navigation rules or the nautical rules of the road, drinking alcohol or taking drugs while operating a boat, or choosing not to wear your life jacket when doing so is clearly not the smart thing to do, are all examples of human error or a lack of proper judgment. One particular behavior that can reduce the number of boaters who lose their lives by drowning each year by approximately 80% is the wearing of a life jacket. It is a simple task that has the potential to reduce terrible loss in lives. Whereas, on average, 700 people die each year in boating-related accidents in the U.S., nearly 70% of these fatalities are caused by drowning, and whereas the vast majority of these accidents are caused by human error or poor judgment and not by the boat equipment or environmental factors, and whereas a significant number of boaters who lose their lives by drowning each year would be alive today had they worn their life jackets, and whereas modern life jackets are more comfortable, more attractive, and more wearable than styles of years past, and deserve a fresh look by today's boating public, and whereas U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Flotilla 12-2 Painter provides safe boating instruction for persons of all ages in order to prevent boating accidents and to teach rescue and survival techniques in case one does occur. Therefore, be it resolved, the Cape Charles Town Council hereby supports the goals of the North American Safe Boating Campaign and proclaim May 21st through 27th, 2016 as National Safe Boating Week and the start of the year-round effort to promote safe boating. All boaters are encouraged to wear their life jackets, boat responsibly, and and enroll in a safe boating class. In witness thereof, all those who boat are urged to boat smart, boat safe, wear it, and practice safe boating habits. May I have a motion to adopt this proclamation? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The proclamation is carried unanimously. Thank you. You are a real addition to our town. Uh, 
always happy to have you. We try hard to promote voting safety and keep people aware of safety on the water. It's important to us and to the Coast Guard as well. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Oh, sure. Good. Bruce, sorry. <laughs>
the very bottom one, the total prior year real estate collections, personal property tax, interest and penalty. That number was higher last month. I, um, I corrected the budgeted amounts, and that this is the correct number, 61%. The budgeted amounts on this report, then sometime during the year, have gotten changed. And I noticed, so we're at 61% of budgeted prior year tax and penalty collections. And the last page, the tax revenue year over year. Mills tax revenue is, is uh, remaining 20% higher than the same month in 2015. It's been that way for several months. Uh, transient occupancy tax remains about 40% higher than in 2015. Um, local sales tax, that's uh, remaining a flat 20.4% higher than in 2015. People revenue is lagging behind the previous two years as many businesses did file late or not yet filed. Jen Lewis went around and when she took the maps, town maps for discussion about their inclusion, she reminded them to file and we did get several people after that. And also Bob Panic set out a few uh, reminder letters to people that had been multi-year non-compliant. And so that was very helpful. We got a few applications for that. Now that the budget's wrapped up, we're able to focus on people in our department. Any questions? Uh, I need a motion to approve the treasurer's report. So moved. Okay. Any discussion further? All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion to approve the treasurer's report is accepted as read. Next, this is on the other planning commission and other boards. A couple of updates to the staff report since it was uh, distributed on, um, well, compiled on May 5th. Under the planning commission, at their meeting on Monday night, um, they directed staff to come back with some draft language relative to Article 3, Section 3.8, the commercial three district uh, for design and construction standards. Uh, and by the way, the text amendment, this was a follow up from uh, meeting. Last month, where council directed the planning commission to look at that issue, so it'll go back with the text amendment, proposed text amendment, and uh, at their June 7th meeting. Under the Wetlands and Coastal Dunes Board, uh, there's an update there to the um, preliminary discussion that was presented in the report. The board it will meet on June the 1st, recommend right proposed to be 4 o'clock, it's a Wednesday, uh, to discuss the beach sand issue. And then on June 15th at 6 p.m. in this building, it's also a Wednesday, to hold a community meeting um, for folks who have questions about the beach sand issue. Um, those are the advertisement. Those, yeah, I have all the advertisements. Um, but that? Well, it's public meeting, so we're going to post it uh, as we deal with the agenda and the, um, you know, the website, and then also in the, in the physical locations we do. But also, we'll get a gazette out. We'll get a gazette out before then. And for the 15th meeting, we'll also post and um, submit an ad on the paper. Okay, thank you. Um, that's all I've got by way of this update. And of course, there's each dredge update. Uh, relatively recently, uh, in fact, yesterday afternoon, uh, a letter was, an email was sent to me with a letter dated May 16th. Uh, from the project manager of Cottrell Contracting informing the Virginia Marine Resources Commission that the Harbor Dredge Project would begin the week of June 1 and dredging expected to commence shortly thereafter. They're, that's their words. The project is expected to be completed by June, I'm sorry, September 15, 2016. Approximately 100,000 cubic yards to be pumped on the Cape Charles Bowman Beach and the remaining approximately 102,000 cubic yards to be pumped uh, at the upland site. So that's the beach dredge up project update as it stands right now. Also the pre-construction meeting will be this coming Tuesday in Chesapeake. <clears throat> Any questions? Yeah, the, uh, when we talked last, <coughs> we were gonna start within so many days of NTP, and I thought the uh, completion date was like June. And there was some concern voiced at that meeting by a number of people that 
it was going to impact tourist season. So now it's going to impact the entire summer. Completion date was 120 days from the rest of the sea. Well, there was, a, there was a June date mentioned at the last meeting. No, there was a there was a 17 days from June to, from April 27th date. Uh, the start date, hopefully, we right. off the beach. And they said sometime. Sometime. start initially on the beach and then they would move. <clears throat> of course that was under the preface they would be starting maybe early April and then they would move to, they would be complete with their beach portion sometime in June and then move the rest of their operation to the <coughs> site which you now we're talking about June 1st beginning. Which, so we don't yet know how many days it's going to take them to do the beach, correct? We do not. It's on June 20th. Do we have a set of plans that shows the proposed arrangement of the 100,000 yards of sand on our beach? Nothing has been updated from the first phase. But we have a drawing that shows something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and that, well, that was also submitted in their application, in the, in the Army Corps application uh, to the MRS. The MRS. So we've got the, the location cited, and in fact, there's even also a discussion about the site B, the southern, the southern beaches. All that, all that is, is, is well documented, but as far as a contour map, we don't have that for this phase. No, from their original, their initial, uh, they showed that the beach could handle 93,000 cubic yards of sand, which they threw 70,000 cubic yards, I think is their estimate, last spring. Probably more. Maybe more. So. Wait, well, 93,000. Oh, total? Yeah. So we're going to put 170,000? They seem to believe it's not going to be an issue. They're going to be expanding the <laughs> width of the dunes. Right. They're going to be expanding the width of the dunes is what they, I don't know how much capacity that would hold, but they would not raise the height. They did say that they would be widening the dunes. On the north end? Yes. And the south of the they're not going to touch the south. Okay. I understand. They're going to start on the Monroe's going to start at the south. Have yeah. they yet come to town to see the results of the winter? If they did, I'm not aware. I did make them aware, though, that we saw quite a bit of uh, movement from the sand over the, from the northern boil, we call it. Uh, they did jump our pier, but they started to fill in south of the pier uh, with the concern and the jetty. Uh, that we could have up here with a foot of water underneath it. Uh, additionally, I raised the concern that that sand will end up in the channel that they just had dredged last fall uh, if nothing is done to it. Sort of stabilize, stabilize the area, which is my understanding the third phase of the contract, which we're about to move into, includes spraying of the dunes as well as placement of dune fence, or sand fence, excuse me. But yeah, it wasn't the dunes that blew, it was the whole beach that blew the whole beach, right? Well, the beach created. You know, it increased the size of the dunes. I'm not at all happy with what's going on, and I don't think we've spoken loudly enough, or at all. I don't, I'm not aware of what correspondence we've had with the Corps of Engineers. Um, I personally tried to intervene uh, and have had a couple of meetings and a couple of phone calls with uh, various people. Um, but I'm not at all excited about getting 100,000 cubic yards of sand on the beach, nor am I excited about getting it on there during the summer, which is not dredge season. And I get it that the Corps says they can't change anything, but I'm not buying that either. So I think that we need to write a, uh, a letter from the town to the Corps, and probably copy our uh, state delegates and uh, our congressmen, and in no uncertain terms tell them that uh, we would like them to stop until we can be satisfied that what they're doing is not going to have the negative impact on the town that we think it is. They don't seem to care about that. And I'm just 
I'm tired of the non-caring attitude, and we don't seem to care. You know, it's our town. It's our beach. It's a tourist destination. The beach is one of the biggest draws, and it's going to be heavily impacted.
um, where, because during, during our holidays, that area is booked. Um, so I, I see them being uh, heard there during off season more so. I mean, they may be south, um, uh, but, but we would probably have a, a pretty good uh, itinerary um, knowing when they would be in port. Um, it wouldn't be nothing special. And then there, um, I, I discussed it with him, um, is any other cost, which is any other cost other than electricity, um, would be at their expense. We, we could handle their pump out, we could handle their, uh, their load, it is very, very, very low. Um, would, would they be running trips out of here for the local people to go out and say, Trips, I'm not too sure. sure. Just That's something that could be addressed, yeah. um, but, the, but the boat, if it's staffed, I'm not sure when they're in port, um, they may have minimal staff, uh, so it may not be open to the public during some time frames, but if it's here during the summer, we can actually talk to them about making sure that it's staffed enough that they can take tours uh, you know, on the vessel. Um, and then they need trips, you know, especially if they charge. You know. With all the tourists. Yes. Yeah, it would be something to look into. And if, I think if it became, if Cape Town became the home of port, then it would be Good for us to ask There was 
there was really no uh, not much more conversation other than they were asking for a letter of, of us asking them if they wanted Cape Charles to be their own port. So maybe they got two or three other places on that point for sure. I'll talk to them a little more um, and, and find out some logistical uh, things that they're looking for. Uh, and maybe keep their itineraries in the past. Okay. And uh, I can help report to Jim. Great. That's fine. Right. Good. And then uh, the other addition um, from the uh, points of items of interest, uh, we actually have the Ahara up for a sealed bid on the website. And I don't know if you all looked at the Cape Charles website in the last two days. It's up there for a week um, out for sealed bid. Um, got any yet? Excuse me? Have you got any yet? Not, no, sir, not yet. Not, unless you want to do one tonight. Oh. <laughs> I love, I, love I love my happy puddle so much. <laughs> um, it got a lot of good reviews on the boat. It, it must, it, and we've gone on and looked at uh, boats of the same era, <coughs> that brand, and they're bringing anywhere from seven to thirty thousand dollars. Wow! So, yeah, so it's a popular haul. So, and we've had very good interest. Uh, excited interest um, in it. Uh, one couple has toured it twice and sent a few emails. Okay. They're aware. So, Good. That's all I have. Any questions? The PMP work, when does that start? I uh, met with Kim this morning. Um, the, they're, they're having uh, the flower, the plants um, are slow. I guess maybe because of the weather. Um, we're looking to start, we were looking to start this past two weeks. And the plants won't be here until, she said, the first week of June. So that, that, that's been our holdup is, uh, is the plantings. And she's having a tough, tough time finding a couple of, of, of what she spec. Um, this is a low growth plant. Um, so she may have to go with a singular that um, will, will grow and, 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 and handle the environment. Right. I recognize you got a hundred things done, but, yes. you know, and that's just one of them. But in, in waiting for the work to start, we can't allow the beds to, to get overgrown as they have. That's, that's being taken care of Tuesday. We're addressing holiday weekend. Um, Instead of starting tearing out the beds, and then we're, we're going to keep them, but they'll be uh, weeded, and the whole harbor will be weeded uh, start starting Tuesday. And uh, they'll, they'll have a crew there to do that, to complete that, to clean the harbor up for. Uh, and I know you fight regularly with the parking lot of the Shannon. The last time I was there, it was. Awful. Uh, we uh, have got money in the budget, yes. but it's not going to be available until the first of July. So you're going to have to do the work over there yeah. to, um, to keep somebody from getting hurt in the park. Right, and cars damaged, and um, I've graded it uh, two times since. I'll, I'll, I'll do it again, uh, hopefully tomorrow morning. Um, and it, we, the park has been using the tractor. <coughs> Um, so we, we just don't, we didn't have the equipment to do it. I looked at leasing a piece of the tractor and it was another $1,900 that we don't have. And since we got equipment in town, but it, it was just tied up and we couldn't get to it. Yeah, I think we have a big liability in the area, so yeah. we need to stay on it. Yeah, we're, it's... And if it's equipment that's in the park, it really yeah. needs to be over there. Uh, yeah. Can't you do it in June and then pay the bill in July? No. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I anticipated not being in that condition. Thank you. So, yes, sir. Okay, thanks.
Thank you. Yes, sir. FYI, the next is tournament on board in Newport Beach, California. California? Is that I just wanted to mention that the repair on the meeting room was begun today uh, that we've been waiting for. And I want to remind everybody that our summer reading program starts on June 21st. And we're going to be partnering again this year with Brand Dog Ice Cream. They've made this great little bookmark, and we're making the program a little bit harder because last year it kind of became the Brand Dog Summer Reading Program because uh, everybody wanted to, to get their token to get a Brand Dog Ice Cream. So we're instead of counting books, we're counting minutes this year. We have a whole array of programs. Um, any questions? There is an age limit on that. Pardon? There is an age limit. <laughs> Part. Yes. We're we're doing great at the library. Good. Good. Questions? Thank you. All right. Uh, <coughs> police department. Would you still make it 2 a.m.? I would say I'd do one. One? 
Right. That's where I'm taking you know, I'd like to know what you say, right? Because usually, um, when the other hand jumps off, and this is really the first time they've come in here, or they just come and kill Charles. Um, and it usually, when it jumps off, it's usually between 1230 and 2. What happens out of there if they shut it down early and they kick them out of they going in the parking lot, we break them up and go place to place. So I just don't want to come in here. Or if they do, you know, I'm not seeing them again. What is what's closing time in this state? Uh bars at two AM. Two AM. Yeah. Okay. But it's not so when it's not our bars, it's the trouble. It's trouble starts, they shut these places down and Interrupts in the parking lots. And once law enforcement gets there, they leave and they go somewhere else to finish it. So they took two separate spots where it finished last week. Started in the parking lot, came to town, and they got, finally got sick of the deputies and my guy being with them. So they went to Bayview and started up again. So that's when we all, they all have to go out there again. So it's just. I'd be fine at 1 a.m. I'd ask staff to just look into that and see what other, other places do. And, you know, we don't, we don't have to. You know, I'm on, so I'm sitting in a car on the board or on the road at 1 in the morning. I'm not going to run them off. They're peaceful and you know, on the fire. But we used to have an artist that, 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 that uh, went against the parking lot, but you can't do that now because you've got too many residents that live right there. Well, interfere with their livelihood. You might be able to put it on the beach side, the parking. Well, such well, it's such not such. It's your no, but it's a way to repeat. You know, yeah, make, make sure it's on the beach. You know, so it is. It could, it can't, it can't, uh, it can't interfere with the fishing pier. Fishing pier stays open. Seven. It's not our problem. Problem. They don't have another marine resource. Don't publish that. <laughs> well, that's why the parking went away. You know, on the beach you can. But the more of the yeah, I mean it's unlawful. Something. But there are what constitutes that. So, so you, 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 uh, uh, staff will take a look at this and come to the recommendation. How so long would it take us to, you know, a special meeting or something? I would wait till the June meeting. Oh, the next work session really is. Oh, the next available date is June second. Second. Think it's something we can turn around pretty quick. It seems to me that the, the ordinance can be written mm -hmm. right now, or tomorrow or next week. Or the only issue is the time. Mm -hmm. uh, well, even if, even if there are other things we learn that we might want to modify the ordinance so that we can learn from other things can, the towns have done, it can still be modified pretty quickly. Once, you know, so it's a good idea. Get, it can, get but I, I, I get the sense that we want to pass it as soon as we can. No, so I'm saying it's, it's in, in effect during the summer, yes. not in the fall. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. no, I'm saying they can write it in, 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 in a week or two, and if we needed to, but if they learn more things, they can modify a word here and there. It can always be changed. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't require public hearing. No, not for a town. Okay. Have statistics that show that there's a lot of <clears throat> crime during, during uh, the two o'clock hour or before that. <clears throat> support that. Yeah, there's plenty, plenty out there. Oh, well, right. I'm about backing that for 12. You okay? You still lead up, do you? I think well, I can do a whole lot of training now. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know what I do the uh, majority of people at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs>
showing a relationship to that in rainwater. Yeah, I have to say that I don't see much correlation there. Uh, personally, um, I don't either. Between June of 15 and October of 15, you can almost see a correlation, I think, in the matter that you'd like to see it all the time. But the tendency of the wastewater to exceed the water production doesn't always follow the rainfall. Sometimes it precedes it, sometimes it comes after, sometimes it comes during. Right. Uh, so. You know, to me, I appreciate you putting it in there. Uh, I don't see that we can draw any conclusion from that. Steve, I agree. There, there's, I see only two places where it really looks like there's a correlation with a big uh, increase in rainfall and a peak in wastewater flow. But there are other places where the rainfall drops and things go up. It, it's, I, don't, I don't see any correlation there. And, Last month we exceeded the wastewater exceeded the water again six hundred thousand gallons. Uh, yeah. Yes. So we still don't know what's going on here. Well, uh, I'm, I'll ask Bob this question. Maybe he can answer. It. I was told that that in our wastewater plant. We use a lot of uh, rewash or washing the wash that the same word recirculated. Well, it's actually discharged. Uh, there's, there's plant water, uh, and that's included in the amount of gallons that they're showing per month. Uh, it would be yes, once discharged. Yes. Once discharged. The uh, there's a plant recycled uh, for uh, water for non potable as well as for back pulsing and the numbers, um, there's a storage tank and three <clears throat> back pulsing to the numbers. So some of this water that we're showing is actually recirculated several times. Um, and added to the discharge. It, it, a little bit, yes, because it's measured through um, after the head works before it goes to the uh, the wastewater flow is measured between the headworks and the pipes. But would that reduce would that reduce the difference instead of that? Well, if you didn't, if you if you if you if the gallons are there and you're continuing to use that same well, it you just depends on what you're. Yeah, you know, that the back pulse wouldn't because it goes back into the membrane tank. It's, it's right. downstream of the flow. The other plant water if it was discharged, if they were washing something that was discharged into the manhole, then it does go back to the head of the plant. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it does. But it still was but it's not it was but it was still measured in there in the first place. I mean, you're not you're not pretty yeah, sandwich point gets measured again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever goes back to the head of the plant could be measured. So there's some deviation there on actual what it what we're what we're doing and what we're doing. But I don't think it would explain uh, numbers that large, so. What do you think, what do you think the number would be? 5% something like that? I couldn't, couldn't guess. Couldn't guess. Okay, any other questions? Public, public works? I have a question. Oh, uh, on utilities, public utilities, so. It's fine. It's fine. Just ask it. I do have a question. Good. I thought in the last council meeting we talked about rural water. Yes. And I'd like to know what the status is on that. I'm waiting for them to contact me. I've reached out to them. Uh, sounds like they will be able to help us they will? look at their mission statement. Uh, it's helped in the training and also the uh, sort of operations of waste, wastewater treatment facility. Thank you. Good. The water out here is coming from the sump pumps. Yeah. Is there any way that, that they can contact the state and try to get them to, to at least lower the, 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 the cut the street, the dip? Because the water's going to be there. We're going to have our mosquito season. Coming to things like the first sign, people, elderly people jumping over the puddles. Not some don't quite make it. It's been put like that for years now. Call me out. Did you call? Huh? Just call me out. Did you call? Just trying to get the 
selected positions are up to the lower wage. <laughs> that would be interesting. <clears throat> the fact that that goes in the let's have a small number of children. That would be what you, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, public works. So it's a date change and a time change. Two to seven. Two to seven. Two to seven. Two to seven. I'm sorry, security's one to eight. I've done that. Two to seven. And that's all I have. Is there any questions? Are you rearranging your volleyball and beach things? Are there going to be sand on the sand? Of course. Let's just leave it on top. Well, it would be. Just answer that. We'll figure it out. You'll be in the south of the beach in any case. We'll adjust as we need to. We don't have any other choice. So right. We'll figure it out. How did the uh, town, first town lot of yards feel? Um, I, I got a little bit of negative feedback because um, people don't realize where the parking lot is, and I was also asked to change it, but I think we need to keep it there because then more people will know about the parking lot. I put up a couple signs next time to help direct it a little better, and then the outdoor market will be there next weekend, so we'll see if anything happens. Yes, yes. And um, uh, I guess the, the weather was really bad too, so I'm not, I'm not too concerned. Um, we'll see how it does in June. Hopefully, we'll get some warm on. Yeah. Nancy was over there uh, this week and she said everybody was almost completely sold out. Good. She said. Good. She and the farmers market? The farmers market. I was talking to the online guys now. Yeah, I didn't work. Okay. I back up. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think the farmers market's one really, and that's a great sign. So that's they were they were hoping a lot of people asked why on Tuesday evening and that's one day there isn't a lot going on in town, so hopefully we'll bring people into town and um they want to come in front of the shop and eat them and so I think it's a great idea. Well, Obviously it's working. There's a rumor in town something about a circus. Is that uh... Yes, I, I, talked, <laughs> I talked with them today and I, I spoke with the gentleman. We're going to speak a little further. Um, they only have one date, July 17th, and that's the first okay. date of my vacation. So I will be in town. So I'm asking CCP to be the sponsor for this event. And what that will entail is we will sell tickets ahead of the time, and I'm happy to do that from my office. And so all a portion of proceeds from Pre-stick ticket sales and at the door sales will go back to CCP. So it could be a great fundraiser. And really they don't need anything from you. Just it would be nice to have somebody around since I'm not here in case they need anything. But they'll do two shows on July 17th. No elephants. Hmm? No elephants. No elephants. I think I said, I don't think there's any animals. I think they do have um honey rods. I do consider that an animal, but um, we had training for rabbits, but there's a rabbit show. You never know. You never know. So that's exciting. So it'll, it'll end up being a nice little fundraiser for CCP. If you give it a top hat, I'll put my tux on. You heard it here. Bob's committed. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, next item of business is the proposed uh, budget utility rates to schedule a public hearing. Before we get started, I just wanted to update you. We discussed the new um, wage and hour law, the new uh, minimum salary for to be exempt, and we it's, like, it's four thousand less. They did go ahead and vote on that. The new minimum for someone to be salary, considered salary, is forty-seven thousand four hundred seventy-six a year. And that schedule will take effect December 1st. So that will have very little effect on us. Um, the two employees, that, three employees that fall in that category, only two of them are likely to have overtime with our policies. So for them to take comp time first, unless they're unable to use comp time for something. So it shouldn't affect us too much this upcoming year. Okay. Well, back up and go over pages two and three of the staff report and have to see the. Um, the numbers they worked so hard on, made all those decisions. 
The budget summary, which shows how much for each department split out by operating costs and capital. And we've included a $90,000 contingency, um, a $58,662 shortfall in the harbor that will be absorbed by a general fund. Um, the third page will <clears throat> show you the breakout of the capital projects by fund and by department and by, um, by funding source as well, where the money is coming from. Are there any questions about those pieces before we go over the summary? And we'll drag you through the entire, all those numbers, but um, the entire budget, uh, proposed budget for the fiscal year 2016 and 17 is $7,974,132. That includes $3,105,600 for capital projects um, as attached. Um, utility rates, well, the overall budget is $48,471 lower than fiscal year 16. Um, utility rates will remain the same. Um, which is a, the minimum would be $107.92 for water, sewer, or trash. And the tax rate will be changed to 0.326 per $100 of assessed value, and that is not to increase um, the taxes on the individual, that is just to equalize the overall tax revenue because of the decrease in property values on the recent Northampton County assessments. Um, it is notable that due to land, land decrease more than improvements and so some people will have an increase and some will see a decrease. So that is, you will hear about and that. And total taxes paid. And their total taxes paid. If someone has a large lot, they're likely to have a little bit of a decrease. If they have a small lot, a large home or home in, in the garage, they're likely to have a little bit of an increase. Right. So it is recommended this time that council set up a public hearing to be held on June 9th, 2016 to hear comments regarding the proposed this year, 16 and 17 budget. We have a motion to that. What, 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 what day did you say? June 9th. You said May 9th, but we mentioned June 9th. June 9th. Okay. 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 Any discussion on this? The only discussion I have is Deborah would like to tell the thank you for the untold hours you put in uh, preparing and presenting the budget to us. And you did a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, any opposed? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just did that to scare you. Very nice work, Debbie. Thank you. Let's see. Next item of business is a Northampton County request regarding the former middle school. So, Olivia, so you're in staff contact for this? Far away. <laughs> okay, at, the, at the last meeting, um, Chris Tucker, the Economic Development Director for Northampton County, he spoke during the public comment request, and requested that the council adopt this resolution. Um, for um, to develop to support to develop the small um, excuse me much time middle school for a small business incubator or a community kitchen and uh, we had a work session um, and discussed it on April 20th and then tonight we have the um, resolution to approve their deadline to submit for the grant is tomorrow great uh, there's no cost to the town to this there's no there's nothing that we need to do. Uh, I think of this as a, as a uh, gesture of goodwill to the county and something that conceivably could even help us. In some sense, anything that helps us is probably also going to help the county. Uh, may I have a motion uh, to uh, approve this resolution? I'll make a motion. Second. Um, is there any discussion before I go on? No. I move for adoption of resolution number 2016019. Supporting planning for the development of a small business incubator or community kitchen in Matchapongo, Virginia, as noticed, and for go reading of the resolution. I need to roll a vote. Natalie, yes. Kevin, yes. Dan, yes. Ben, yes. Ben, yes. Brian, yes. Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, we are finished with most of the things. Uh, we does anyone have any comments? Any council members have any comments? Please come in. Okay. 
I just want to say with Mary, you know, I was sitting in council that actually got to get through his budget through the process along with our treasurer. I'd also like to identify the humans going above and beyond in the budget process as well. Uh, some things she does are not noticed, but they are greatly appreciated. Well said, Brett. Thank you, Ruby. Good job. Um, any other, anyone else with any comments? Uh, I'd like to congratulate Bay Creek for the uh, presentation of the new houses and the uh, progressive dinner they had last night. If everything takes off as the woman who, what's the magazine? Ideal Living. Ideal, Ideal Living for people who are pre retiring and are pre retirement. I mean, it's going to be a huge boom to Cape Charles. So I'd like to really thank Bay Creek for doing that last night. Anything else? And I think that they need him and always about Announcements. First of all, Jen Lewis has already told you that the Crappy Goose Festival has been moved to uh, from Saturday to Sunday. And it will be two, is it two to eight or two, two, to, seven. Seven. Two, to, seven. two to seven. Two to seven. Uh, my office hours will be May 24th, six to seven. The Cape Charles Outdoor Market is May 28th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, May 30th, the town offices will be closed for Memorial Day. June 2nd, there is a town council work session at 6 p.m. June 9th, there is a town council public hearing relative to the budget. We just passed that. Um, June 14th, I have my office hours from 2 to 3. June 16th is a town council regular meeting at 6. And I believe that is also when we all swear in the new council members. Uh, on June 28th, I have my office hours from 6 to 7. And I have no further comments. And I have a question on, uh, did you get something from the county that said that they would be swearing in here because I think the individual electees got a letter saying we had to go there? I have not heard anything about that. I exactly. Do they do, typically. And I've sent um, Tracy Johnson a letter uh, a week after the election. And I um, followed up with an email yesterday and I've not heard back yet. But typically, um, she or a member of her staff will come and swear in the council. I'll let you know for sure. I'll see you back. I know I was sworn in uh, in town. Yeah, I was. Well, I looked last time either because it was a November election. Mm -hmm. There's only one person elected. But typically, when there's three elected or four elected, yeah. they come here. But we've got individual letters saying they weren't coming. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll call her then. Okay, anything else? Motion to adjourn. Who made the motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.